Hey. So yesterday I found this really neat program that you can throw any string of text, a sentence, a word, whatever, at, and it will use some of the most advanced artificial intelligence techniques available to try to produce that text as an image. Um, so as a quick example, this is, I asked it to show me a portrait of the programmer running this program, and this is what it gave me. So this is as it's learning and getting better, it starts out less certain, and then it gets more and more certain, and it gets better and better at producing the thing until it kind of levels out. And so this is what it came up with, um, which I think is pretty cool. Um, that is an interesting interpretation of the idea of what the programmer running the program is. Um, and I'll have a quick showcase of what I've gotten out of it so far at the end of the video. But first, I'm going to show you how to run it. So I've got a link to this. It's called a Google Colab in the description. Um, so first, go and click that link. Um, I also want to say this is all completely free. Uh, you can sign up for Colab Pro to get it running a little faster and run multiple instances, but totally free. So all you have to do is um, none of this stuff matters. Ignore all this stuff. Um, for just getting something out of it, all you have to do is go down to this section called Parameters, and where it says Prompts, you just put what you want it to uh, produce in here. So I'm going to ask for a picture of a horse juggling flaming chainsaws. Um, so that's what I want it to produce for me. And then all you have to do, literally all you do, is you go to runtime and you click run all. And so what that's going to do is it's going to go and it's going to create a server instance for running this code for you, all of these little play buttons are actually little snippets of code behind the scenes. And it's going to go through, it's going to run all this stuff it needs to run to get everything set up, and then it's going to eventually generate a horse juggling flaming chainsaws. So this takes between like five and ten minutes to, uh, and I'll get into more details later. But first, let's just let this run, and then we'll come back and take a look at the results. Hey, welcome back. So the generation is all finished. It downloaded the video for me. So now we can take a look at what a horse juggling flaming chainsaws is, according to this AI. Not bad. Um, we've got some horsiness, some fire, juggler, perhaps. Uh, yeah, not bad. G good attempt. Um, one thing I will say is that, uh, and you'll see in the gallery, the results are extremely variable. Sometimes you get stuff that's just completely not even close at all. Other times it's kind of like this where you can see it it gets the idea, it knows what a horse looks like, it knows what flames are and juggling is. Uh, don't say any chainsaws, maybe the, the logs come from the chainsaw, um, but it's not quite on base. And then there are others, I, I found I've had the most success with more abstract things. You get some really cool results with abstract inputs. So that's really it. Um, the only other thing I'll say is if you have already run it once, you don't need to run all. All you need to do is uh, update your prompt. So you put a new prompt here, and then all you have to run is the parameters again to set that new prompt. Then you just rerun execution and rerun generate video and demo video. Um, and the nice thing is you can actually uh, run these uh, so you can click to execute so now this is going to run and execute it'll take a few minutes and you can actually click to generate the video and download the video immediately afterwards and it'll run these in sequence so that's nice um, so that's it um, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail for those that want to push this a little further but uh, that's the the simplest form of it um, 
So enjoy. I'll show off some uh, of my uh, results here. And yeah, hope you enjoy. So first up, this is an art gallery full of paintings of art galleries. I found that self-reference gives some really cool results. Um, it's really good at making these sort of weird, recursive, infinite things. Next up is a boat full of beans, which is a little joke with my wife and I. Um, she has a YouTuber that was joking about that boat that got stuck, that it was full of beans. These, this is more uh, beans full of boat, <laughs> riding the bean sea, but anyways. Uh, Tolkien Hobbit playing the hurdy-gurdy for a tavern full of dancing hobbits. This is definitely the most literal interpretation I've gotten. This really nailed it. I'm, I'm incredibly impressed with how this one turned out. Definitely telling it Tolkien Hobbit was the trick. Now the universe. This was when I started looking at more abstract things, which, as I said earlier, abstract concepts and things like that tend to give really good results. Man considering the infinite natural of reality, notice the typo. I meant nature, but nonetheless, this is probably my favorite. I think it really just turned out beautiful um, and captured the concept well. Man evaporating into the universe. This one just is beautiful and kind of haunting. Um, I really like this one a lot. Humanity being swallowed by the universe. This one's pretty spooky, but I really love how it turned out. Again, th these abstract prompts give some really great results. I love how it has little people and flesh being torn apart. And lastly, lesbians on a cute date in the woods with a small puppy. Um, I don't know why, but it picked up this sort of painterly style, and it really nailed it. <laughs> like, it, it got the woods and the lesbians and the puppies really good. Okay, so welcome to the slightly more nitty-gritty, in-depth explanation of what's going on for people who want to try to push this thing a little further. So first off, prompts can be multiple. So you can say that you want a landscape, and then you can put a pipe, a vertical line, uh, and say uh, that you want a landscape and a man and a horse. And then what it will try to do is produce a mixture of those three things. And you can actually also give it percentage weights. So you can want it to be 10% landscape, 10% horse, 80% man, for example. Um, so that's the first thing. The next thing is the model you choose. So this ImageNet model is a good default. It's going to, it's just trained on a bunch of images. It's going to work in general. However, if you want more of a artistic style, you can use the WikiArt model that's trained to produce um, things similar to images off of wikiart.org. Um, faces is a model which is good at producing faces, and Flickr is trained on Flickr images. So um, you'll get really different results choosing these different models. ImageNet is a good default, but it's worth trying the other two, um, or the other few. However, if you want to use one of those, you have to download it. So in this selection of models to download, you will have to check and then rerun this to download the additional models. Um, beyond that, there's really not much to say. Uh, you can do things like give it a target image where you can upload a picture and it will try to produce that picture as best it can. I haven't had great luck with that. It, it got pretty weird and trippy, but worth a shot. Um, and beyond that, there's, there's not too much to, to fiddle with. Um, you can, oh, I guess I will say max iterations. That's how many uh, individual images it will produce. I found that after like 250, it tends to level off. So I go a little bit past that. But beyond this, it's really producing basically the same images. Um, you can also put negative one here to have it just keep churning, and then you have to cancel it. But I found that super annoying. Um, display frequency just is how often it will show an update. That is turning out pretty cool. 
I don't even remember what it was. A new prompt here. <laughs> Neat. Um, yeah, that's uh, really the only additional things to know. So I uh, hope you enjoy, and hope you have fun uh, getting some neat little things out of this. Thanks for watching.